recording's on. Um, okay, so I have my Tomap set up. Um, I added a Tomap Collider 2D. That's it, ready to go, set up there. Um, did you all go over effectors and like what you can do with Tomap 2D, Collider 2Ds and um, updated colliders and all that stuff? No, okay. Did you see Tomap Collider 2Ds? No, but you did a 2D game. Okay, 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 okay. Start from scratch. So, um, you don't know what that is. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so we have, I'm gonna start literally from scratch. Okay, where is my tile asset? Delete that, delete the palette. I'm literally just starting from scratch. Give me a sec, give me a sec, give me a sec. All right, so, uh, file, if I get a new scene, basic 2D, uh, don't save. Yeah, it's just a main camera, okay. Just want to double check. Okay, so delete that grid. Okay, so when I make a new 2D scene, I'm in a 2D project right now. When I make a, a new 2D scene, um, and if you are in a 3D project, that's fine. You can literally just click 3D to 2D. Um, this one comes with a main camera and nothing else. A 3D scene will come with a main camera as well as a uh, directional light. So the light will affect 3D objects within it, okay? Um, no, no, I don't think you're silly. Um, I'm just surprised that you weren't shown this, but for making a level. But anyway, um, what I need to do is, sprites, I need to bring in uh, that little platform that I made last week. So you all would have made a platform and you would have made a, um, whatchamacallit, a ground kind of tile as well. Um, I just made a platform, so I'm just going to use that one platform. It's fine. So um, to import, right click, you import new asset. Going to import that. Where did I put it? Should be on the desktop. I know. I'm showing you now. Don't worry about it. I'm showing you now. Can you import the Photoshop file, or does it have to be the PNG? I would suggest not to. You can import the Photoshop file, and there are reasons and times when you can import the Photoshop file. Um, Unity will understand layers as well, so even if you have it set up in layers, it will bring them in as separate layers. Now, in my experience, and this could be different, but in my past experience, um, it works until it doesn't work, if that makes sense. PNG is, like, stable. You know how it works. It's, like, it's, a, it's an image format. It's, like, a, it's just one flat item that's it job done um we have had compatibility compatibility issues with psds um psds are also larger so if you're sharing a project it's not a huge deal but when you get to like thousands of psds it may become a deal um and when you export the project same thing so like when you make a build um the assets that are put in are psds so they're slightly larger it may or may not be a huge deal um in my experience and if someone else has seen something new because Unity changes literally every week. So I may have missed some new special PSD cruncher or something like that that I don't know about. Uh, but as of now, it uh, it I, I would suggest as much as possible if you export as a PNG um, would be my my uh, advice. I could be wrong. Uh, I don't know everything, but here we go. So because I have a 2D project, when I import the platform, it comes in as a sprite 2D and UI. If you are in a 3D project, this will come in as a default. So it's not a huge deal. Um, if you accidentally made a 3D project, it's really not a huge deal. Um, it is easier though, for what we're doing for this semester, if you're in a 2D project. Um, so let me go default sprite. So um, I'll just change it to sprite 2D and UI. So this is 128 by 128. So I'm gonna make sure that the pixels per inch is 128. And the reason for this is I want uh, the the game engine to understand that this whole thing is one unit. So it's like pixels per unit, 128. Specifically for the sprite sheet, apply. We don't need to mess about most of the rest of this stuff. We could do a, we could do a repeat. You don't really need that. That's just like when it, when it wraps around, what does it do? Does it repeat? Um, it's not a huge deal, but it's a bit more important for 3D textures, to be honest. So. Let's look at this. It comes in as a sprite sheet, so I can drop it in like that. So um, what I can do, if I'm lazy, I can just go, you have them as a sprite sheet, what do I do differently? I don't understand the question. Like, they're a sprite? Did you make a sprite sheet, like, multiple? 
Oh, you made like they're not individual. Like you put them all together in the sprite sheet. You may need to go to multiple and go to the sprite editor and cut out each sprite sheet. If you do an automatic cutout, uh, hold on. So if I slice and I do an automatic slice, it should work. So you see this is automatically sliced what it thinks is one piece. If you have separate pieces in there, it'll automatically um, slice around those areas. I don't know if that's what you're asking, but sprite editor and slice and slice. But I have a single, so I'm going to do sprite mode single, apply. So yeah, as I said, when I drag it in, I can have this one single sprite. Um, and I can do, this is the old school. Okay, so if I click on the sprite, change the sprite mode to multiple, because it's multiple sprites. Go to the sprite editor. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't change it to multiple. And on the slice, just set it to automatic. Unless you have them exactly in um, in a grid, you can do you can do grid by cell size if you know the exact size of the grid. You can do by grid cell count if you have like you know, say you have four cells in here, you can do four by four, uh, two by two, sorry, which will give you four. Or you can do automatic if they're if they're not um, completely occupying one cell. So an automatic. If I click slice, you can see that it's sliced. It it kind of detected that this area is where the sprite is. And then you just hit apply. This is recorded, so you should have this. Um, I will go back to single. So it's a single sprite, pixels per unit is 128, because I made it 128 by 128, meaning I want Unity to understand that this is one unit. Apply. So, okay, so back to here. I can put this in individually. Um, in the old days, what you would do, you didn't have tile maps, so what you would do is you'd like take one, do Control D to copy, uh, maybe child had to do first one, and move that. If you hold V in Unity, you can grab the edges, and you can snap them together. So this is the old school way. Just slowly, slowly make a little platform. Like maybe this is a prefab, and you can just dump those in. Um, you all know how to make prefabs? No. Oh, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, let's say let's say I'm making a platform here. Um, and this is a tree piece platform, okay? So I can ho I can call this tree piece platform. It's not your fault. I'm just surprised that you weren't shown this. Um, so this is a tree piece platform. Um, let me make a collider, box collider 2D. Um, it will only show around the first one, so I need to edit that collider. I'm showing it the old school way, which is not necessarily the right way, by the way. And move that like that. Now I have a platform with a collider, and the collider fits correctly. So let's say I have this platform. I, I want to make another one, right? So one here, and then I want to copy them, and I want to copy that, and then copy that. So I'm making these platforms. Let's say I'm doing that. And then halfway through, I'm like, oh no. Oh no, I made a mistake. Um, I kind of want, let's say, let's say I want all the sprites to be tinted slightly orange. Oh no, now I need to do that for all the individual ones. Pain. So that's a pain. So I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to individually do stuff. So what a prefab allows me to do, delete all that. I, I've literally just gone over that. Which I brought one in. Um, Control D. Make a copy. If I hold V, I can snap them. And then I can keep doing that. You don't have to copy this. This is all recorded. Um, also, I am sh just just to be clear, guys. I'm showing you the old school way. We don't have to do this because we have tile maps. So anyway, so let's say I have this piece. So you saw what I did before. Um, I know I was going to reuse this tree piece platform and I was reusing them and I was like, oh no, I need to make a change. and I don't want to do that all over again. So what I can do is make something called a prefab, which is I just grab like this. So anything childed to it will be part of the prefab. 
make a new folder called prefabs. It can be called anything, but I'll, I want to be neat. So I'm going to make a folder called prefabs and drag that in. Literally all you need to do is drag that into the, uh, into the practical folder. That is now a prefab. It's turned blue and that's a prefab. Um, it doesn't turn into prefab just because I called this folder prefabs. I could have dragged that anywhere into the assets, but it's just the act of grabbing that and dragging it to here creates a prefab, okay? So this is the prefab. Now what I can do with this, which is very cool, so let me make some extra ones. I'm going crazy and I'm like, woo, happy days, yay, change. And as I said, same thing happens. I'm like, oh no, I made a mistake. Um, the I want all of these to be tinted like slightly like slightly blue because I'm in a I'm in a cold level. So I'm gonna use the same textures but I'm gonna tint them. Oh why can't I select the color? There we go. Tint them slightly slightly blue. Okay. And I'm like, oh no, I have to do them all. No, but I don't. So on the prefab, because this is already a prefab, now these things happen. I have open select and overrides. And overrides it shows me what has just been changed as in it knows what the prefab has, so my default prefab's there. See, it's still normal, but this prefab specifically has overrides, which I just override it in. So I can revert them, so if I'm like, oh no, I made a mistake, I can revert them so they'll go back to the reference prefab, or I can apply, in which case it'll apply to all the other prefabs. Boop. And it's changed the original prefabs and all the other prefabs change. So the difference between like a game object here that isn't a prefab and prefabs themselves, prefabs reference, um, like literally the prefab that it's that it comes from so they reference this one and if i make a change in them i can t take the change tell it to go to the original prefab and then every other prefab will draw from that prefab okay you can also make prefab variants so let me let me make a prefab variant here so i want to make a prefab variant and this will be a variant and in this one um let's pull that up this one I can tint at maybe yellow. Oh, the color wheel is weird on my monitor. Okay, so I'm tinting that yellow. And that is now a prefab variant. Okay, so then I can choose which one I'm going to use. Yours is only snapping to the corners. I cannot see, so I don't know what's happening. So, uh, let me delete that prefab because I don't need it. That is the concept of prefabs, okay? So what I'm going to do is now show you the modern way of doing things, which is to create a tall map. Um, it depends where you cut your your sprites. I, I, I can't understand that unless I see a screenshot or a, or a screen share. Uh, it may be that you cut the sprites wrong. I'm not sure. Uh, I, can't, I honestly can't tell because I, I can't see it. Um, so it could be that. So I'm going to create a 2D object, tile map, and I'm going to create a basic tile map, okay, which is a rectangular. Uh, these are for like isometric stuff and hexagonal, um, meaning like if you want to make it, everyone knows what isometric games are, right? Isometric game. Like this, so the, the tiles are like 45 degrees instead of like straight on. Uh, Hades is isometric, yes, um, but this kind of stuff. So that's if you have sprite sheets that do this, if, or tile maps that do this, but I don't want to. I'm using a, there's actually a Unity thing there. Where is it? Using isometric tile maps, six minutes, go watch that. But I'm doing a basic rectangular tile map, 2D tile maps, rectangular. And then it creates this grid, creates a tile map. I can give it a name. It's gonna call this ground. And um, this allows me to create a level. So what I need to do is click on these and I need to um, create a tile palette. So I'm gonna open the tile palette here. My active tile map, so the active tile map that I'm making, cause I can make more tile maps. Um, so I can have like one for ground, one for background, one for like platforms, whatever. I can create as many as I want. But right now I'm working on the ground one and I need to create a new tile palette. So I'm going to say, give me a new palette. And it's like it was here. It's a little button here. When you selected the tile map. And create. Uh, just call it whatever. 
So I'm going to call it ground tile palette. Ugh, oh, annoying. Sorry, in this folder, you just select that folder. Assets, sprites, yes. Cool, new palette here, and I'll rename it here. Um, you can rename it. So ground tile palette. You should be able to see it when you create a tile map anyway. So right click uh, 2D object, tile map, rectangular. When you click on the tile map, you should be able to see this little thing here. Um, so I have created a tile map, tile palette, and it says, oops, go back. It says drag tile sprite or sprite texture assets here. Yay, I have one. Drag. Oop. And this is going to make something called an asset. Just say yes. So, and because I told it that 128 by 128 is, uh, sorry, 128 is one unit, it knows to fit that into one unit, okay? So I have that here as a unit. And with tile maps, what you can do is you can draw with the active, or you can even like paint a whole box. So let me show you a box. Yupa. So that's a box. I just drew a box. Or I can do a brush and like this is way faster to make levels than we used to be able to make them. Boop. So let's say I have that. And I can close that. I can edit that at any time. I can always go back in, open tile palette and uh, edit. I can erase stuff. So I'm like, oh, made a mistake here. Um, and I can edit stuff as well. So that's nice and easy. Um, guys, I don't know which button that you're talking about. I really don't, because I don't understand. I can't see your screen, so I don't know which button you're referring to. This tile palette here, this tile palette window. When you click on the tile palette, you don't see that. If you don't, you may have to go to window 2D tile palette. So anyway, uh, we have this done. Let me just put in a little, uh, I'm just gonna put a cube in and it is a box collider, which won't work. So I'm gonna remove that and put a box collider 2D because only, only 2D colliders will interact with 2D stuff. And I'll give it a rigid body 2D. So now it should fall. Um, Y'all should have seen this, right? Rigid bodies and colliders. Yes. Okay, cool. So if I press play, it's not going to work. It's just going to fall to the ground because the ground has no collider. Yay, sus. So let's go back to the to the tile map. It's here, and all I need to do is add a component. So instead of a box collider or whatever it is, it is two, uh, sorry, tile map collider 2D. Yay. And it automatically creates a tile map collider. And you see that it even like um, follows the sprite sheet. Yep. Boop. Doop, doop, doop. I'm on 2020.2.2.0. Did you go 2021? Yeah, you may need to import the time up. If you didn't set up the Unity project as a 2D project, you may need to go to the package manager and import the tile map. Okay, let me just pause this. All right, so have this, happy days. If I look at the game, that's what it looks like. Got a little platform on the ground, a few platforms up there. 
Um, I'm not doing any character yet. There's no main... Uh, sorry, the camera isn't following the character. I'm not doing any of that stuff yet. But um, what I will do is I need the background because the background is default. This is default Unity Blue. Whenever you see this, you know that someone forgot to fill in the background. Um, one thing I can do is see up here where it says free aspect. That is your screen aspect ratio. Um, so I can set it as free aspect, which means I can, you know, do this and it'll adjust. Or I can set it to like, let's do full HD. So this is a full HD aspect ratio. So no matter what I scale it to, it's going to keep that 19 by 6, I'm sorry, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. All right. Um, so this is most things in the world have 16, 9, not everything. Phones are just all over the shop, like what, what their aspect ratios are. Um, but most TV screens, um, and most monitors, vast majority will be 16, 9. Uh, 1920 by 1080 is the most common one right now. I'm sure it'll change to 2K. This is QHD, that's 2K. And then in the future, it'll probably change to 4K. But for right now, it's still the most common is 1920 by 1080. Um, and more important than the resolution is the aspect ratio. Yeah, 4.3 is still there. Um, oh no, it's gone. You used to have a 4.3 here. So I guess even Unity has updated to be not 4.3 anymore. And you can see for mobile, there's all sorts of like weird aspect ratios. Like my phone is 21 by 8 or something dumb. Um, it's weird. Uh, you can also just go generic 69. You can do that as well. Um, instead of doing the actual resolution. It doesn't really matter. We can do 69. Okay. Uh, iPads are still 4.3. Yeah. Um, so what I can do now is because I know this is 1920 by 1080. I can make a background. I can make the background the exact size of the screen. So exactly 1920 by 1080. Um, meaning you won't see outside of it. And that way... Uh, I can have that background seem like it's filling like everything as if it's a whole world. But really, when I look at the world, it's going to be like just here. Just a little 1920 by 1080 side. Oh, sorry, in here. This is the camera. Main camera. In this little area. And what we can do is uh, <clears throat> we can have the background move according to the player position. So let me make a little... Well, I have the cube, so let's just use my cube as the player. A cube is a little player for today. Player. And wherever I move that player, uh, as long as I'm in play mode, I want the background to also move with it. So it looks, from the player's point of view, as if the background is moving um, as I'm moving. Um, but actually, all I'm doing is scrolling some textures. So I'm like just having the texture um, tile and repeat and just move. So we'll try and do that today. I'm not sure if we'll get to the whole thing today, um, but we'll at least try and build the different layers. Um, so for something like this, give me... Hmm, actually, let me show you these first. These are some examples of video game 2D backgrounds. Um, specifically, let's look at something like this, where you can see like you have the... So like this will be like my ground here, maybe some platforms. Um, and then this is background stuff, but it's not just one background. So we might have this background that um, that's like stuck to the front layer. So it it's, doesn't have colliders, but it's um, it's it's it moves where the ground layer moves. And then we might have a mid ground here, um, and maybe a second mid ground here, and then the background. And we can have loads of layers that each of those can move at different speeds. So let me show you what parallax parallax background see videos parallax scrolling background video game video game video game if not i'll just look for raymans because they are let's see and i will post this into Um, so you can kind of see the background here. Like this is a very simple where it's only one layer, but the movement, that one's a great one. The movement of the character is not exactly the same as the background. So when this moves forward, the background moves a little slower. 
And the same with this, the the stuff that's a little closer, if you look at the shovel island, let me go back, the stuff that's in the mid-ground moves a little faster and the stuff in the background moves slower. So what that does is it gives you a sense of um of of like speed. Uh, not speed, sorry, distance. Um so it makes it look as if those things in the background are very, very far away. Because things that are far away, uh, you have to walk a lot further to walk past them. This is the, a really great example of parallax. So stuff in front of you is moving the same speed as you, exactly there. Stuff a little further back moves a little slower. Stuff it even further back, like look at the background. Oh, beautiful. So the more layers of parallax you have, the more pronounced this um, effect is. Um, it comes from like, this is the o original um, which was used in 2D animation. This is how they used to make um, 2D animations back in the day. So you would have this parallax effect. They would literally shift the frames one by one um, as the camera was recording. Um, so it's been used from that. And like a lot of the stuff we use um, in games often comes from film or animation. And this is one of the things we took, which is parallaxing. So the background's moving at different speeds. Okay. Um, you can watch that video in your own time. It's a great little video. I highly recommend. Um, see, the, like this is 2D, but it makes it look like it's so 3D, even though it's not. Coolie Bops. Um, let's go back to... Today, I think we're going to try... Let's try three layers of background. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Parallaxing takes a little bit of work. It's not a huge amount of work, but it takes a little. So, what we're gonna do today? We're gonna try three layers. I'm gonna try one layer in the foreground. So, like just behind these platforms, there'll be some a layer of like maybe some bushes or whatever it is. I'll do some another layer in the background. Maybe what we do? Some like hills, maybe some trees, and then further back in the background, we'll do some like far away mountains and stuff like that let's do that let's see if we can get that done today yes so don't worry about following along today because i will be recording this and i'll be showing you how to do it and you'll be doing it in the tutorial classes so once you have to, uh so going back to the tile map again this is recorded uh go to the tile map you just need to set a tile map collider 2d Add a component for time up Collider 2D. That's it. Should automatically detect where your time ups are and set up a collision for them. It doesn't matter what tiles you're using, but yes, the idea is to use the tiles that you've made. Uh, again, this is not your final assignment, so don't stress too much about it. I just want it to, to work. Okay. Any other questions before we begin? So I'm going to create new. Now, if you kept up with me, it would take too long, I think. Uh, we wouldn't be able to cover everything. It's quite a bit we need to cover, and we only have an hour 20. Okay, so um, I will make a background. So what am I going to make? I'll call it background, that we know. Backgrounds. What am I doing here? I'm doing 1920 by 1080 because remember that's one of the one of the aspect ratios um, if I want to make 2k game I'll do like um, what is it 2560 by 1440 uh, game yeah I'm doing full HD if I want to do 2k it's 2560 by 1440 if I want to do 4k it's that 3840 by 2160 so it just depends on how high res you want a game to be um, Unity will upscale, so if I have a, a game where it's like um, I, I make the backgrounds on 1920 by 1080 and I play it on like a 4K iPad uh, or a 2K Retina iPad, it will upscale them. It just doesn't look quite as nice. Um, it's it the, the stuff will be a little blurry because remember you can't create pixels out of nothing. You can stretch them bigger, but you'll get blurring and you'll lose detail. Um, so it depends on how detailed you want to be. 
some people are really crazy about art and they may be like nope we're going to go full 4k so the background is full 4k um, obviously your game will be bigger than um, and you have more um, it, it's a it's a barrier to access because some people may not have space to download the game um, and also there's more work in terms of like working uh, with the the actual um, Photoshop file as well because you'll need a better PC and all that kind of jazz. So I'm just going to do 1920 by 1080 because that most people should be able to handle that. Okay. So let me grab. Let me grab my. My floating platform. Because I just want to use that. I'm using the move tool. And with the move tool, I can just drag it. Bring it up here. Slap that in there. So I'm going to use this as my reference. Um, just put it there, just for a reference, so I know more or less what I'm I'm looking for. Do, 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 do. I'm just holding um, Alt and dragging them. Why do I have a gap? So weird. Why do I have a gap? I don't get it. Oh, I'm missing one. Lol. Okay, whatever. More or less. Don't really care that much about this being beautiful. Just need it as a reference to kind of know more or less what I'm doing. Okay, cool. All right, so I have that ground flow here, and that'll just be my reference, so I know um, this is the whole screen size. My platform is the bottom here, as you can see. It's my little bottom platform, and I should be able to see uh, what I'm looking at. Actually, let me shift my camera up a little, because I can see the bottom of the platforms. So let me just do that, and now I can't see the bottom of the platforms. So I can push this down. So now, what I can do is lock this layer. Um, I always forget what the lock is here. So this is locked, so I'm not going to edit it, and I'm not going to mess with it. I can make a new layer. And this will be... Let's do this as... Foreground 1. Now, I'm assuming that in my game, this like ground platform is just going to stay ground all the way. Okay, like I don't have any dips or anything like that. Um, at the most, I have things that go up higher, but I don't have anything that goes lower. And the reason for that is going to put some bushes here. So if you imagine, like, if I had a character walking and like went down, there'd be a floating bush in midair sometimes. So I don't want that. Um, so I just need to make sure this is my base level. I can go higher than this, but I can't go lower than this. And then I can put my my little background stuff here. Um, what do we want for the background? For this first foreground background, what are we doing? A fence that just keeps repeating. Yeah, we could do a fence. I'm gonna do fence and fence and trees. Um, let's leave the forest for the one behind. Let me do the forest for the one behind. So I'll do fence and trees. So foreground one, then I'll do mid ground, which will be the trees, uh, sorry, forests. And then I'll do one behind that, which will be the mountains. So I'm only going to do tree layers. Okay, so I'm going to do foreground. Um, and again, ideally, first thing I do is reference. Um, so let's see if I have anything here in the video game backgrounds. Do to do. -do. That's pretty. Keep that for the forest one later. Dude. Um, oh, there's a fence there. It's very low poly, but uh, low pic pixel arty. That's a good forest too. Hmm. I don't know what uh, 
good game. A bush with flowers would be nice, actually. So let me do a bush and some fences, and I'll do trees and for the background. Oh, these are cool. Um, I like that. Okay, um, or these are pretty good as well. So I'm just trying to look at what you know, what might give me ideas, um, because you you honestly get ideas from anywhere. Like even a Minecraft fence is kind of cool. So the the worst thing you can do is just go like, I know what a fence looks like, and jump straight in. Um, you shouldn't do that. You should ideally try and get some um, some inspiration because you never know. There could be stuff that's in, like this is cool. For example, I kind of like this more actually. This one, yeah, I like that more. Okay, let's do something like that. So I'm on my foreground, and again, I'm starting with dark. Uh, today I am using a pen because we're cheating. Um, oh, actually, let me drag my foreground below so I can see what it looks like from below. Let's do that kind of fence. This may be a little too dark. So, so I'm basing this off that fence that I saw there. So it's kind of... And the other thing I can do, if I'm going to be smart about this and lazy, uh, once I'm finished, I can do a... Oops, sorry. I can do a duplicate and I can even do like stuff like rotating it a little so you, um, maybe even doing a skew on this so this is like if I hit control T uh, it's grabbing this whole area because I must have like added a pixel here somewhere because I'm silly if you right click on the transform you can do a skew and you can do stuff like this so instead of having to draw multiple fences, I can draw one and try and skew. You, you don't get away with too much skewing, but you can do a little. Uh, but let's let's finish off this one first and we'll see. So I'm going to make it brown, like that color, maybe for the mids. And uh, I'm going to swap the... Oh, there's that little pixel. Go away here. I'm going to swap the opacity down to maybe 30%. And let's imagine... So if I look at the lighting... My lighting is coming from top left, so I'm going to try and keep it top left. And it's okay if I have darkness down towards the bottom, so it's lighter up the top. Okay. Pop up the color a little bit, drop down the lightness again. And this time I'm doing wood, so I'm trying to do little streaks like that to try and keep that wood shape. I don't know if you can see that forming. If I if I do small thin streaky shapes with a with a textured brush, I kind of get a little bit of wood texture. Um, and every so often, I may even want to do like a little swirl to get that little cartoon wood. Um, that's kind of nice, that little swirl. And again, same as before, same as we did here, I'll take the darkest color um, on a very low opacity. And try and add some uh, some cracks, in this case chips, because it's wood. So I'll add some little chips. Maybe some cut lines. Like so. And finally, highlights. So let's do like a little yellow highlight. And let's just do a little. I don't, wood isn't that shiny, so I don't want it to be too shiny. So I, would, I don't want to do like harsh highlights like this. So my brush is a little bigger than it would normally be, but I still only add highlights in certain areas. So I always think about like if, if this is a real 3D object and I said light is coming from the top left. So if light is coming from the top left, where is it going to hit a 3D object? It's going to hit the tops of the object. It's going to hit the sides of the object. Any kind of things that are protruding, it's going to hit on those areas. So that's where I'm going to add my highlights. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, so uh, you can do it on the same layer. I am doing it on the same layer. Uh, you can separate them in different layers if you want to be safe. 
if you're going to separate in different layers, because we're working with like three different, um, remember we're doing foreground, midground, and background. What I would suggest is you group them. So let me just do that here, group. So I can call this foreground. And let me just drag that into that folder. So that way everything in here is uh, grouped there. So I can have three groups, um, one for foreground, one for midground, one for background. So now um, let me make a little, let me do some color variations in there. I don't know if people remember that. Just on a very low opacity, um, do like a little bit of red maybe. Maybe a little bit of green towards the bottom as if like some moss is growing on it just a tiny bit. There's a little bit of green down here. Not too much, just a bit. And that's pretty okay. Um, it's a bit dark. So image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. Let's pop up the brightness a little. Not too much. Okay, the dark is still very dark. So what I can do is something called a uh, levels, which I don't know if you've seen before. I don't think I've shown you that. So I'm going to go image adjustments levels. Um, and what levels allows me to do, these are um, dark mids and highs. I only want to adjust the darks. So I'm going to try and make the dark, the darks get, oh, no, the other way. There we go. So I can individually affect like the mids here without affecting the highlights too much. I think that's a bit better. I don't want it to be as like it was too contrasty because my my kind of my bottom tile isn't that contrasty so I didn't want it to be too contrasty. Okay so I have this um, and as I said what I can do is I can just copy this. I'm just holding alt. Alt and the move tool will copy. Let's do a skew on it see what that looks like. Um, skew think I can get away with that. Uh, it's getting a little, you see it's getting a little blurry. Let's see, let's see. When I apply it, maybe it's not too bad. Ah, not too bad. Wouldn't really notice. Especially if you like, don't put them right next to each other or you overlap them, something like that. Um, people people hardly notice, especially if I do that. Um, you can you can barely tell that it's a, a different thing. So let me just duplicate this one over here. Uh, maybe duplicate this one over here. Um, no, let's just do one. And let's do a little rotate on this one instead of a skew. So again, it'll look like something a little different. Not too much, just a little subtle. Um, and I can even do stuff like scaling it down a bit. So, you know, so basically someone looks at this and thinks, oh my God, Baz drew like four different things, but no, I just did it at once. So I'm lazy. Um, and I can even do stuff like, Let's use the lasso tool. Delete all this. Boop. Oh, look, a single post. Oh, Baz is so, so hardworking. Oh my God, he's made so many different unique things. Cool, so we've got a bunch of stuff here. Done, and all I did was make one piece and it looks like a bunch of uh, repeating fences, which is great. Okay, so um, will I add some bushes here as well? Ah, go on, let's add a bush. So this is all in the foreground layer, by the way, so let's add another layer for the bush. I should have a bush brush. Oh, I need to save this. YOLO, here. And hopefully I have a bush. Something that works. Yeah, but make sure people don't know you're repeating. Got grass here. Do I have bush? Forest fog. Got tree. Ooh, I don't have bush. Okay, that's fine. Let me just use a. Would leaves? No, leaves won't work there. Let me just use a blobby brush. That should work. Let's do the painter style or do you have maybe this one. Let me just do a quick test here. Do, do, do. Oh, opacity too low. E yeah, I can work with that. Okay. 
So I'm on 100% opacity because I just want to set up silhouettes. I won't go as dark as I did before. I'm just going to go like here maybe. And um, maybe not that bright green because stuff is a neon green. And let's make some bushes. So I'm just kind of dabbing them. I'm using a pen. You can see the pressure sensitivity in this case is very useful. And maybe some flowers in there as well, as someone said. Uh, one trick you can do, by the way, to make things not look like they are all separate pieces is you overlap some stuff, so it's a little overlapped. Um, so peop if things feel a lot more realistic when they're overlapped, because in the real world, things overlap. Nobody spaces stuff out perfectly. Um, so this is a, a nice little neat trick to kind of like make things look a little more grounded than they really are. So again, same concept, but because this is a bush, I'm being a lot more blobby, like so. Do, do, do. Again, top left is my lighting, so I'm biasing my painting towards the top left. So I have a little bit of shadow down the bottom. Let's shift it again for a little bit of color variation. And we'll do an even... So the edges are a little sharp. I'm going to try something. I'm not sure it is going to work. Filter, blur. Let us do a... Let me try a box blur. Eh. Eh. I think that works better. Yeah, it is a little sharp with the blur. I don't know. What do we think? Yes or no blur. I think yes blur. Gaussian blur probably won't give me too much of a difference, to be honest, um, with what I'm doing. Blur, Gaussian blur. Probably very similar. Yeah, pretty much. Um, what I can do, though, is maybe grab some, maybe have some details uh, pop out. So, on 50%, I'm going to draw some leaves like that. So, is this some leaves are sticking out? And I'm going to, again, bias them towards the top area because that's where the uh, the light's coming from. And some little blobs of leaves. Because you know the way um, bushes have leaves that are facing all sorts of different directions? So some will face the right direction to catch some light and some won't. So that's kind of what I'm simulating here. And uh, again, let me make some lighter ones. So there's going to be a few kind of lighter leaves. Just a few here and there. And again, um, I am using a pen, but you can use a mouse for this because the brush is doing all the heavy lifting here. Um, it's doing the rotation for me and like different jitters and stuff. So that looks pretty bushy. It's not too bad. Again, I did them all in the same layer. If you're brave, you can do the same, but I have been doing this for a while, so I would probably recommend different layers. But you know, you do you. Um, do we need flowers in them? Let's add some little, little tiny flower blobs. Berry blobs. Just a few. I think I'll just do solid colors. Maybe a bit darker. Does that work or do they look like, they look like disease bushes? So no, I'm not going to do that. COVID bushes. And this is why I should have done that in a different layer. Okay, it's fine. I have enough. Okay, let me just leave that as here. So basically, when I go in the game, hopefully, oops, sorry, turn off auto select. Uh, these won't move, so they won't like move like that as I'm moving along. They'll stick to the ground um, and they'll just repeat as I'm moving along. Uh, but hopefully, we'll see. We'll see that working. So that's my foreground. Done. New group. Let's call this midground. 
Uh, what do we want here? Trees, was it? Okay. Okay. I'm going to try. I'm going to try a spicy. I don't know if this will work. But. So I'm using a brush. There is a tree brush here somewhere. It may be too realistic though, because these brushes are designed for um, realistic. So this may be too realistic for what I'm trying to do, but let's see. Um, let me do a quick test. Mm. Maybe. Let's see. Put the opacity on 100%. Um, let me go to the brush settings, which is up here. And I'm going to do the background to be maybe this kind of like almost blue color. So shape dynamics, I'm going to leave them. There's a size jitter there already, which is good. So it's going to vary the size. You can see that happening here. Um, for the pen pressure, angle jitter, no, we don't want it to angle all over the place. There's a roundness jitter, so some will be squished and some won't be, so that's good. Uh, scattering, there's a little bit of scattering, so it goes up and down, so that's fine, I'll leave that. Let's go to color dynamics. So there's a bit of a huge jitter already. Okay, so it's already set up for me, that's good. Um, let me leave that. Let's just go... Hmm. Bit too realistic, I think. Also awful color. Let me change the huge jitter a bit higher. Do, do, do. Okay, that's a bit better. But uh, I don't know. I think this brush is too realistic, to be honest, for the style that I'm going for. And the background should be behind the foreground. Yeah, that's too realistic. It's great if I was doing a concept art piece, but you know, rip. Oh well. Guess we'll just have to make it ourselves. Um, that was the brush pack that was linked. It's pin here. It's evident concept art, I think. Um, and it just comes with all those brushes set up. It also comes with instructions how to set up those brushes. Okay, so this is back to the normal. Let's go to textured brush. Yeah, we'll use that one. I think so, yeah. It's all that North's good, same one. Okay, so let's do one tree, and again, we'll try and be sneaky and copy the trees. Um, maybe we'll do two. No, let's, let's try one first. So 100%. Oh, I should have. Uh, let me do some trees game. Don't want to go crazy. Mm, that kind of works, I think. Or this. A bit more complex than I want, but I can dig it. Okay. Copy image. <laughs> Could just use this. Well, I need to get rid of the white, but ship it. All right, done. Thanks, guys. All right, see you on Friday. Job done. Actually works pretty well. We could just nick it. No, let's not be, let's not be awful. Um, if you do this, you will be failed. Just FYI. Um, actually, that's a, that's a good point. For the end assignment, if you use stuff and you don't reference it, you don't specifically say, I got this from somewhere else, is a fail. Okay, so I was going to do a straight up tree, but I'm glad I referenced because I kind of like this, you know, uh, blobby tree and the fact that it's kind of leaning off to an edge. kind of like that. So I'm going to do that with my own. I'm actually going to push it even further.
And I'm not like copying. It's not the worst if I do copy because I'm trying to learn. But I'm, uh, I'm getting pretty close. And you see the way it's got some nice little curls here? I like that kind of stuff. I like a little... People like that kind of little... Because it's stylized. Like, um, you get a bit of that in real life, but it's not... Like, trees don't really curl like that. But you're giving the impression of the, uh, the organic nature of a tree. So it's kind of nice when you do that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so that's my tree. Will I risk it? Yeah, I'm going to risk it because YOLO. Okay, just do it on the same layer. Since I'm heavily referencing this tree image, um, you ideally should, but you can credit it as a reference, as, as a study, as opposed to like an asset. So I didn't use that asset, but I credit it as a reference. I definitely referenced that, you know? Um, the The... I wouldn't say legality, but like the, what you're supposed to do, um, technically is a bit hazy and vague. Like it's, um, it's not a hundred percent clear how you would probably reference this. Um, if you were going to like copy it, the, the rule of thumb, I would always say is like, make it so people can see that you got where you got your inspiration from. So I'm getting it very close, right? I'm using these little sections that I'm using, but not so much that people can say, hey, you straight up just copied that. And I know that line is difficult to see because like, I pretty much am straight up almost copying this. Okay. Do a little bit yellower. What's my opacity? Let's go to 10%. Do we have to credit brush packs? Depends on the brush. Um, some brush packs say you must credit them. Some brush packs don't. Really depends. It, uh, all these things. This is the complication of uh, crediting in general. Um, some things you must credit. Some things you don't have to. You have to check the license when you download stuff. Like they usually put it somewhere. Um, Creative Commons is a thing where you can get loads of stuff free because it's Creative Commons. So it means you can use it. But what you can use it for varies depending on the Creative Commons license. So some stuff you can use it um, straight up as is. You don't need to credit. You don't need to attribu attribute to the author. So that's called a Creative Commons um, non-attribution, I think. And then there's stuff like Creative Commons. You must attribute them. And sometimes you must say it like, uh, let's say, in the in the credits or something like that. Or you can, you can say it in a... You can just put it somewhere, anywhere. Um, so it depends on the license, you know, they're all slightly different. Let's do those little lines like I was doing. So this is where I'm pushing my style into it, a little different from theirs. Grabbing my little lines in here that that one doesn't really have. really depends honestly the question is uh, it really depends if you don't know the safest is to ask the creator if they haven't put up a thing usually people are pretty chill about it I'm just doing some big blobs of little color here um, and I think I'll do some very light highlights some one or two here, one or two there. You also see there's a thing here where there's a lightness variation. So it's darker up here and lower down here. Um, so we can do that as well. So I will go and grab the burn tool here. So dodge will lighten, burn will darken. And uh, Depends on your exposure up here, but uh, hopefully you can see that darkening. Don't go too far because you can uh, you can make it too dark. So you can see it looks like there's shadow at the top because uh, the, the leaf canopy is obviously covering it. So that's a quick and easy way. 
no, you don't have to credit the tablet that you're using because the tablet you bought and it's a tool and part of buying the tool is the um the attribution that you you don't like you know if i bought photoshop i don't need to attribute photoshop because i'm paying for that service and part of that license if you read the 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 actual terms and conditions part of that license is that i i don't have to attribute them let me be lazy and nick one of my bushes and let's see oh no Let's see if I can use that. Lol. What's kind of sad? What I'm doing? Let's do that. So it's a simpler version of that tree, but it works. Um, I need to change these bushes. They look too similar to the bushes. So uh, I will try and do a hue on them, possibly. Cool. Drop their lightness a bit. So they look similar, but not the same. Why am I the Wanzler? I'm making trees. And I'm just erasing them off a bit to give them a bit more, oops, a bit more definition than the, you put in a picture of the Lorax, not the Wanzler. Okay, um, if I make a character in a game with the character creation outfit system, you draw the character yourself for your own game. Yeah, you probably would have to, as in like some other person's game, you use that as a character creation. I'd say you probably would have to, yeah. Um, the other thing I will want to do, so let me look at some references again of the video game 2D backgrounds. You see the way as it goes further back, you can either do one of two things. Either it gets darker as you go further back or it gets lighter as you go further back. Now, because I have a daytime look, most of the time in daytime, things get lighter as you go like the, you see like when, because it's daytime, boop, things far away get lighter, but at nighttime, things far away get darker. It's because of the amount of light. So let me do that. So I want these to be lighter. Um, so what I can do, I could do an adjustment layer. I can just adjust them individually. So image adjustments, and I will go to brightness contrast. Mm, actually I'll do the levels. So image adjustments, um, sorry, hue saturation, and I'll do lightness, so I'm gonna give them more lightness. Okay, so it looks like it fades a little bit more into the background. Image adjustments, hue saturation. If you accidentally do it, then like worst case scenario, someone will just go, hey, that looks like something. And you go, no, it's not. And then you have a big argument. Add more shadow down here. 
Um, so now it looks a little further away, right? So let me revert that. Oh no, I, I drew too much. Okay, I can't revert it, sorry. Um, yeah, most things are inspired by others. Copyright law is very complex. Um, where things start and what, where things begin, uh, where things are considered a reference as opposed to a, a straight copy. It is pretty difficult to define. Um, there's been a number of copyright cases and um, usually the indicator is like there's a reasonable person who doesn't understand the source or doesn't know the source material would they be able to uh, understand it so but that's you know there's no there's no law there's, well there is a law but there's no like exact rule of like it should be um can i rotate this so it doesn't look exactly the same Okay. Um, let me put another one behind. And this one, I'll do like image adjustments. I'll make that even lighter. So that is my hue saturation. Make that lighter. So that looks like it's even further in the background. I could put that behind stuff. Okay, like so. So it looks like it's even uh, even farther back. Could turn on pattern preview. Uh, okay, cool. So I can add one here. So it just it doesn't look like it's just. And maybe one of the foreground trees again. Uh, one of these. Like here, maybe. No, here. Okay, so, I mean, it's not too bad. Got the back. Cuckoo. Um, and then let's do some montañas in the background. Or actually, let me grab these. Um, and just make a copy. Control J. And I'm going to collapse them. So I'm going to um, merge layers. So they're all one, one layer here. And I will try to put that all the way to the bottom. And make those even lighter. So image adjustments, brightness, contrast. So it's like a whole. Oh, sorry, lightness is what I want. Image adjustments, hue saturation, and lightness. So even further in the back. So now it looks like a super dense forest. And all I did was make one tree. Plus one for lazy. So this is a bit repeating, this one here. Let me see if I can shift that a bit. No, I think that's a bit better, more broken up. Just be careful of repeating stuff. Okay, cool. Um, so if I zoom in, oh, look at that. Looks like a forest. All I did was make one, one tree. We're so smart. Okay, um, and actually, No, it's fine. I'll leave it like that. I was wondering if I should put these foreground trees in the uh, in the in the foreground instead of the midground. Uh, what do we think? Oh, I do need to remove that tree. <laughs> Good catch. Where is that layer? Do do do. Oh, I'm gonna turn on auto layer. This one. Okay, it's that one. Delete. Good catch. Yeah, that is a big brain moment. I mean, technically, I'll only be tiling them left and right in Unity. I wouldn't be tiling them above, so it shouldn't be a problem. But uh, might as well make things easier on ourselves. In case issues show up. 
Where's this one? Eh. Okay. Cool. Nice and neat and beautiful. Right. Let's do some mountains. So that's mid ground. Oh, will we do four layers? We'll do four layers. Because we hate ourselves. Um, so this will be mid ground, far, and this will be our mountains. And then we'll do a background that's just a full background. So let's do some beautiful mountains. Um, let me go back to video game reference because I want to see what color the background mountains would be. Like same color, I guess, but low. Maybe we can go to that kind of like clay pink. Let's try. Let's try clay pink. Let's see what happens. I might go dark. I'm not sure. Clay pink is here. So I'm just going to get that shape up. I can barely see it past all the trees. No, I like it lighter. Okay, do some lightness. Um, and this one I'll be like real simple with. Um, do like very low. I can put it above just to see what I'm doing. Um, which is good that I did because now I see that there's a error here. with my brush strokes but I think that helps with the look okay and then let's put in some top left lighting again shift the colors top left lighting a little bit just a little bit here and there not too much and it's a mountain so it shouldn't have like super harsh highlights Put in some color variations on a very low opacity. You can barely see anything, but should add a little bit. Oh, that's too much. Okay. Let's put that to the back, see what it looks like. Lovely. Oh, need to make sure that it has the bottom parts. What size is the back? Okay, what size is the background? What size is the background, peeps? Yep, depending on what you're doing. But this specific one I'm doing is HD. So it depends on what you're doing. But I'm specifically doing HD. Just going to fill in here to make sure that it's no gaps. And I actually like the look of this kind of, I'm using a mouse right now, because the, the brush kind of adds these blocky shapes, kind of like that. So I'm going to add some of those blocky shapes just here and there. It's nice. Erase off this part. Cool. Let's put that back on the back. And basically I want to do this in, oh, wrong thing. Auto select off. In Unity, I want to set it so it scrolls like so. All right, so the parallax, the background will parallax. Um, yes, so like the camera in Unity will automatically adjust to the screen resolution if you let it. There's a few things you need to consider, um, which are uh, the UI. So you may need to set the UI. It depends on where platform you're using. So if I'm going it to um, 
if I'm going to something like Android, I'll need to make sure that I test on multiple different screen, res screen resolutions and screen aspect ratios. It's a bit of a pain. So I'm going to do the final thing, which is the background. I mean, it depends what you're running at 8K. If you're running Cyberpunk at HD, you're going to need a supercomputer. If you're running Super Mario at 8K, you're probably fine. <laughs> 8K is still pretty pretty uh, painful. So I'm going to do just like generic blue sky. Um, if I have a color and I select a layer, if I press Alt Delete, remember I said like go look up shortcuts? Alt Delete. Done. Oh, I don't know. Crisis is still pretty, pretty crisisy. And I should have a cloud brush here somewhere. Let's do some fog brush first. Do do do. And let me go reference again. So the sky gets deeper towards the top and lighter towards the bottom. And kind of more, almost, almost like RNG again, because it does. So let's do that. So push towards red a little. Get some deeper, deeper colors up above. Oops, my opacity is a bit too high. Then like almost, almost pink, but like, let me do a super low opacity on this. Down the bottom. Right, so that's a really simple background. Um, but that kind of works. So we'd have that background moving like that. We could, we could have little clouds in the sky if we wanted to as well, just kind of Drifting happily away. Wait, I need I need the clouds brush, not the fog brush. Where's the clouds brush? There. Job done. Okay, so it's not th the most complex in the world. But it works. More or less pretty good. Um, considering we did this in like 50 minutes. I'm not doing too bad. So I need to export these now. Luckily I have been smart. And I set them up in separate groups. Because I'm a genius. And I turned that off. And I'm going to export them individually. So this first. So file. Uh, save as. Sorry. I'm going to go PNG. So this will be foreground. Sure. Turn that off and then go to the next one. And again, just keep going. Oh. In case people are wondering why I didn't need to go to the menu, Control Shift S is the save as, same as save as, it's a shortcut. Or I can just go to File, Save As. So mid ground, save, yes, whatever. And then mountains. Let's call them mountains, so I know it's the mountains. And finally, background. Hmm, it's a bit of a big, big blob. Well, 
let's see, maybe it's fine. Um, so that'll be background, actual background. So these are huge, yeah, they're pretty large, but because I'm only using one of them, it shouldn't be the worst, because I should be able to reuse them multiple times. So, let's bring them in. So this is gonna be a little more complicated because, create folder, I'm gonna call this backgrounds because I wanna have one folder just for my backgrounds. So backgrounds, um, if I look at a sprite, right? Let me grab one of those sprites. So here's a normal sprite. Boop, boop, boop. So I can do stuff with flight, uh, sprites, sorry, like flip them. So I can flip them in the X, I can flip them in the Y. That's fine. Until now, I'm not quite sure why, um, we don't have an offset. So there's a thing called an offset, meaning I can, if this thing tiles, I can shift. It still stays within itself, but it can shift the texture on it. I'll show you that when uh, when I bring in the other textures. So let me bring those in. So important new asset. Let's go to backgrounds. Oh no, sorry. I need to go to design practice. So here's all the backgrounds, all of these. Import. Perfect. So these all come in as sprites. Happy days. They look great. But remember what I said. We can't. Uh, we we cannot tell them. So they. Uh, sorry, we cannot offset them. So they work. If I put them there, they do. Uh, they do kind of block everything. Um, there's there's a a sorting issue, but we'll deal with that in a second. Um. But what they don't do is they don't um, they don't offset, so I can't like make them st like move as the player moves. Um, for the sorting layer, for now uh, everything is on the default layer. We can set different layers. If you click on the sorting layer here, we can add a sorting layer. So we can add one, and we'll call it backgrounds. And everything in the background sorting layer. Do, 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 boop. Uh, oh, let's go back to, let's put the backgrounds behind. So everything in backgrounds layer is always gonna be behind default layer. So we can do that. So the sorting layer is important. There's also an order in layer. So in the sorting layer of backgrounds, which one shows ahead, which one shows behind, uh, zero is default, and then one will be in front of zero, two will be in front of one, and so on and so on. But anyway, uh, so that's done. But this doesn't work for me. So this isn't gonna work. I see a question. There is no question, okay. Um, let me delete this, there is a question. So I actually need to use 3D stuff here because 3D does have a thing that um, on the material that can offset. So I know this may be a little complex, so I'm just gonna show you this. Don't get stressed about it, it is recorded. Um, and someone should be able to help you on Friday as well for this. So I'm gonna create a 3D object. I'm gonna create a quad. And a quad is, let me swap to 2D. And actually let me put the quad behind everything. A quad is just a flat shape okay uh, you can do minus one yes good question you can do minus one you can do like uh, positive anything so let me just slap that quad to fit the hole so this is the quad and this is technically a 3d thing so if i add in a, a light here you see that it's affecting the quad um, although you can set lights to affect 2D stuff nowadays. So this is a 3D. But because it's 3D, I can do a material offset. So let's see what that means. So I, I just scaled that quad so it fits the uh, camera viewpoint. Don't have to be exact, it's more or less. And let's now assign this quad a material. So let me do my... Uh, let me do my sky background first. Let me work backwards. So sky. So in here, I'm gonna create, right click, create a material. 
and a material tells a 3D object how to look. So the material takes in uh, textures or maps, and we'll learn more about this in uh, maybe this semester, hopefully we get there. Uh, if not, you'll definitely learn about this in third year. Um, and then you assign that material to the quad. So I can just literally just drag this to, oops, sorry, drag that to the sky. And it's now using this material. So if I just change the color, you can see that changing there, okay? So cool, this is, let me rename that to sky material. And I'll add in the sky to W. So now it's working. It, uh, you can see, hopefully, that the sky is there. But it's all dark because there's no lighting on it. So all I need to do is change the material type. By default, it is a standard material. Standard material is a standard 3D material. Takes lighting. Um, does all that kind of like uh, pretty reacting to light. Has a metallic maps and smoothness and all that jazz but we don't want that we want it to just like literally look like how we made it in photoshop so for that we just go to unlit texture and that is what we did in photoshop uh, well i don't want to open it it's going to take forever so it's unlit meaning it does not need to care about um lighting now notice here though i have an offset now offset and I can edit this in code. I don't think we'll get there today, but I can do this in code so it offsets, okay? Um, and that will let it kind of like scroll. Actually, this one seems to have an issue. Why is that? Bump to less of standard on let. Hmm. Why is it smearing? I don't know if that's just because I'm doing it here. If I let go, does it? Hmm. Shouldn't be smearing. But let's see. Let's see whether that has a problem when I do it in code. Anyway, let's keep going. So I have that sky quad. Let me swap back to 3D. So I know I've got three more to do. Um. So let me just. Control D, move that forward, Control D, move that forward, Control D, move that forward. So this is going to be mountains. Because this, the material has that offset ability, so I can offset to let it move and scroll. Uh, sprites don't, as of now. That may change, because it's kind of silly they don't. Um, what was it? Mountains, trees. Wait, was it trees? What do we have? We had sky. Yeah, and then bushes and fences. And bushes and fences. Cool. Then I just need to make more materials. Um, so I'm just going to duplicate this one. Control D and rename that. So this will be my mountain mat. I may need to tweak this, we're gonna see now. So uh, I'm gonna drag the mountain into there. Ooh. But it doesn't have transparency. So if I drag this one here, oh, let's put it in front so you can see. It doesn't have transparency, so that's not what I want. Uh, let's put it there. Let me just hide the trees. And so it doesn't have transparency, so if I go to the material, I'm gonna change it from unlit texture to unlit transparent. Um, if I swap back to 2D, oh, lovely. Okay, um, so that looks great. It is doing the smear thing. It's supposed to continuously offset. I'm not sure that's because I'm messing with it here, but I'll need to check that before next week. Uh, by the way, that's the concept. You, you should be able to offset and it should. Oh, maybe I need to set them to. I know why. So let me grab all of them. One, two, three. I need to set them to wrap mode, repeat. That's why I was saying this is more important for 3D. So same diff here. So this should work now. Mountains, give me that offset. Oh, beautiful. All right, so that's basically what we're gonna try and do in code. We're in code gonna try and tell it to offset. 
Uh, and because we set it to repeat, it'll just continuously repeat itself. So again, just to be clear, um, you need to select the sprites you imported. I, oh, I need to do the background as well. Um, in the wrap mode, instead of clamp, we need to just tell it to repeat. So it will repeat. We can also do mirror, which will like flip them back and forth. But in this case, I want to, I want to repeat. So now if I go back to the sky, this should offset. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So I'll, I'll be adjusting this in code depending on where the player is. So let's keep going. Uh, trees. Turn that on. Uh, where is my, this is my mountain map. So copy that. Call this tree map. Use this texture instead. Put that here. Oh. And then bushes and fences. And again, duplicate that. Bushes and fences mapped. And drag the bushes and fences in there. Did that work? Oh, yeah, it's there. It's really small. And drag that onto the bushes and fences squad. So if I swap to 3D, so they're all placed behind. Uh, sorting layers doesn't work for 3D. So you need to you need to actually just put them behind in 3D. Uh, sorting layers only works for 2D. Uh, but so you can see that I've placed them like that. So they're like kind of four layers away from each other. You can't see it from behind because quads are like that. Quads don't allow you to see from behind um, unless you have a specific double sided material. But if I go in 2D, it just looks like that. And if I go to the game, hey, I can't even tell. So in game, hopefully next week, I don't think we have time to cover the code right now, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to like offset them. So as I'm moving, they're all going to offset at uh, different rates. So stuff closer to me will offset faster as I'm running. So you can imagine like if I'm running, it's going to off offset really fast. Stuff behind me, like the mountains, will offset a little slower. So it'll be like really slow moving. And stuff really far away, like the sky, will offset even slower. So really, really slow. No, you won't be doing the parallaxing code in class. So what I'll do next week is I'll do the parallaxing code next week. And we will also start... Remember, I asked you to think of three props. We'll also be doing animated, um, animated props, okay? So um, let's keep that for next week. You just need to create your backgrounds in the class because I that will take you the full two hours, I think. So you create the backgrounds. Um, you don't have to do four like I've done, but I've done four. Sky, mountains, trees, bush and fence. And um, we will, we will um, get them scrolling um, next week. The script is super simple. It's a very simple script. So it shouldn't be a big problem. Um, it's just about... So props, what I mean by props is like... Um, so you see all these things here, right? These are background decor. So de decoration, they don't do anything um, except move maybe when the player moves. But they don't have any interaction with the player. They're not stuff uh, in front. So like a prop might be a little ladybug. Well, it doesn't necessarily need to do anything, but it's animated. So maybe a little ladybug that kind of like flaps its wings every so often or a bird that flaps around or like a, a, yeah, a bird sitting in the tree that like opens its mouth and squeaks every so often uh yes next tuesday we make them scroll next friday you make your props if everything goes as planned let me just turn off recording there